Hey, it's Aaron, and today I'm with a 2023 BMW M340i. The M means really fast or something. It's German. I think it's motorized. It doesn't matter. The M means it's the fast one. Anyway, uh, this is the 3 Series, BMW 3 Series. Came out in about 2019 for this particular uh, generation, and then it had some updates today, so uh, as of this year. So the updates are mostly uh, cosmetic. You see the change in the grill. If you've been paying attention, you'll see that change up there. Uh, much less of the beaver tooth, more of a refined. The M series has got uh, a few of the changes as well. There's also changes in infotainment. We'll talk about that later. And uh, then the M itself brings body changes like this grill, the spoiler down there, another one on the back, couple of aerodynamic changes on the bodywork, and of course, these badges. Biggest change with the M series is, of course, the engine. Uh, so this is a super twin turbo something something. It's a twin turbo charged six cylinder engine under there, and it is putting out a good amount of power. Well, I'll tell you, 348 horses worth. So uh, that's the power plant under there, runs to all wheel drive on this one. This is X drive and uh, very, very well done. There is turbo lag as there always is. Um, what I wish that uh, BMW could do for the price that they're charging for some of these vehicles is maybe do some twin scrolling instead of, so uh, two stage turbos. Um, but that's probably asking a lot. You really only see those on very, very high end vehicles. This is more attainable. So let's talk about this car. So as per always, we will start with design. So what you're seeing here is uh, the three series at its best. This is a beautiful paint. I love this paint. Uh, it's really dark blue, but it comes out purplish in some places, uh, reflects a lot of light and creates different light, uh, light modes uh, because of that. So you'll see a shelf across the side. You see that uh, belt line shelf. You can see that that's a different color than the bodywork right in front of it. And then you can see the, uh, maybe just the top of the car and over on the back around where above the, uh, the tail lamp and so on. And maybe up here on the front, you'll see a little bit of the really bright part of the blue. So really well done, goes nicely with these wheels and red calipers, uh, which are part of the M package. And again, simple line work. So you, it beeps at me because the key's close, so it unlocks again. Yeah, it's, it's a setting, you can turn it off, but I kind of like it. I like being able to just walk away and it locks itself, it's pretty great. Anyway, uh, design-wise, what I was talking about, I was talking about that belt line, which starts right about here and runs across right there creates this big belt here which changes in dimension so it's wider here than it is back there it's a little thinner at the back that creates an upward swoop the the bodywork itself is literally making slight upward scoop so all of that works together to make that forward motion on the car bmw is really good at that they're also really good at creating this uh simple and minimalistic design that looks classy forever and also sporty. Um, they do that with a few bone lines through here. So this is not just a straight curve. There's a little dip and a curve and a dip again. And that uh, creates nice kind of simplistic looking, but very nice bodywork that's more than just a flat panel. Then you have, uh, of course, the rake here and the run across and then how they kind of clip it, but then flatten out a little bit for a trunk. But the trunk is on an angle. It's not flat. So that boot is not flat. And now it's really windy because I turned the camera on. I have to turn this way and talk. So we keep going and you can see a little hint down there of a uh, running board going on. And uh, I mentioned the wheels before, I really love these wheels. So the lines themselves, this one fades out again right about here. And there's a short line right in here. Starts just 
ahead of this panel and runs re uh, runs really soft through here starting right about there runs really soft like this it gets more defined as you get back here and then ends at the tail light that's what i was talking about with the extra little lines the little bone lines creating that curvature right there that's kind of a it's a really good look uh, so for the M series specifically, those side mirrors slightly different. You can see the uh, extra on them, I think. You can see this spoiler added on back here. It's just a bump of a spoiler, but it is just enough to give that little aerodynamic push. And then, or yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, down here you have functional airway. So there's a air opening right here and it's functional. It exits right here. That uh, reduces the turbulence around the tires. So what happens is you have air that comes across like this normally, and it's gonna get tur turbulent right here because of the wheels and the tires. By passing air through here and out here, that creates a buffer that lessens that turbulence's pull on the car. Improves fuel economy a little bit and uh, handling a lot. Then you'll see, uh, maybe you can, you can see the edge up here of the uh, scoop up front and just a nicely, nicely done setup. Um, I'm not gonna show you the trunk. I'm not gonna bother getting in it uh, as far as opening it. I don't climb in it. That's a Jill Simonello thing. But anyway, uh, I don't, I'm not gonna bother getting in the trunk. Just believe me, I'll show you pictures and stuff, but just believe me, that is pretty close to a Jersey three body. It is a very large trunk. Um, I got six bags of 40 pound pellets for the, uh, the uh, heat stove in our house and there was room I probably could have got 10 easy in there so nicely done on that now let's talk about the interior a little bit wave my hand a lot like I'm Italian all of a sudden Whew. okay here in the back seat a little bit tight but that's mostly because this seat is back about two inches or so um, because it moves back when you shut the car off to get out. Otherwise, the seat is set for six foot three, which is me. Um, you can see my knee is just hitting the seat. If this was where it should be when I'm driving, which would push the back to a little forward, I would have knee room in here. I do have foot room to go underneath the seat, which makes sitting in the back seat way more comfortable. Uh, I have a pretty decent amount of headroom. I'm just just scraping my hair on the top so i probably got i got about a finger's width or so left up there um so again six foot three and the back seat is nicely done i wouldn't try to get three across back here unless you absolutely have to um, but otherwise nice back seat uh, there is climate control back here it is a tri-zone climate in this particular model uh, so there is some back, there is climate back here. There is also, uh, there are also two USB-C ports down in the center. You have these, um, so you could shove your device down in there and plug it in if you need to charge it. Uh, you have door pockets and so on. It's a pretty nice interior. I feel really comfortable back here, surprisingly. Um, normally I feel a little cramped, but BMW has expanded the 3 Series just a bit to give a little more space to yeah some of the big and tall let's go up front i got a lot to talk about up there there now the seat has uh, moved forward so this is this position i'm normally in to drive this car there are a couple of things that i do not like about bmw in particular especially their uh, uh coupes and sedans one of those is the driver tunnel so the tunnel does not go straight forward it curves on that one side, it curves to the left. That means that you cannot put your right leg straight. Your right leg has to cock to the left, and that starts getting to your hips when you're my age. Um, I'm 50 years old, and sports cars are a lot of fun to drive, but when they do that kind of thing, it means I can't drive them for a long time. Did a road trip in this, which was roughly two hours each way, and I was hurting. I was hurting. Um, not terrible, you know, but still, uh, if I was a little older than this, I would definitely hate that. So that's one thing to remember. The other thing to remember is that uh, uh, bimmers usually have their pedals pretty close together. 
Now that's not a problem for me here uh, because of the shape of the pedals. So the brake pedal is not a long and wide one. It's a, it's a smaller one. And that means that I'm not hitting it accidentally. And the fuel pedal, which is a uh, perfect placement as far as uh, where those pedals are, it is uh, small and recessed. So the pedals are not even. One, the, the throttle is further back. That means that you can't hit the brake and the throttle at the same time. Something that happens because I have big fat feet, wearing those uh, size 12s down there, and uh, when, you get in, when I get into a car like a Ford that has very close pedals, I'm often pushing both, and that is not good. So I have to, I have to consciously really heel toe, even in a not sports car, um, and I'm not, I'm not big on doing that. I want to heel toe when I'm doing performance driving. I don't want to do it 24 seven every time I drive. Uh, sorry. Anyway, so um, that is one thing that this tunnel accommodates. If you are a heel toe driver, you won't notice that this tunnel is getting in the way of your leg. Uh, but for the rest of the regular people in the world, it gets in the way. Uh, other than that, it is very nice inside. So this has a, a big new infotainment system. The upgrade to the infotainment is not in graphics or other things. It is the fact that first, it is one large looking screen. It's actually two screens uh, for the, the driver's gauges and the uh, infotainment, but it looks like one big integrated screen. And that screen is voice activated. So you can ask it to do things on the fly. Now, BMW has had that before, but they seem to have improved it. Either the network out there has improved somehow so that it is better at connecting, or they moved a lot of that uh, voice recognition on board uh, like Mercedes does so that it's not asking the cloud to interpret things for it. I believe I'm going to go with the latter. Um, I don't think that our networks out here in Wyoming have improved enough that, that it's that, uh, I'm, that it's that. I'm pretty sure it is they moved more of it to the car. A uh, big complaint I had before was when you tried to talk to it, it would sit and think for a long time or it would just do nothing because it just timed itself out. Um, it doesn't do that anymore. Now I do have a new complaint and that is that anything that sounds remotely like the uh, keyword to get it started, we'll get it started. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's kind of a middle ground there. Uh, so yeah, but it is a beautiful system, works really well. We used it for navigation while we were on our little road trip and it was great. My favorite thing about those kind of systems is that you can be on the freeway at 65 or 75 miles an hour and you can just tell the car where you want to go and it sets it up and you don't have to pull over and stop and do a bunch of stuff or whatever. That is beauty. So otherwise, it is a typical BMW interior. Uh, they have changed the shifter. It is no longer something you grab onto. It is a little paddle looking thing that you move back and forth. Otherwise, it works exactly the same. Um, I kind of like the new one because it is a little cleaner and it makes getting to the drink holders that are forward of it, which is one of my least favorite placements, it makes them easy to get to, making it no longer a least favorite uh, placement. Cars that have minimized that stuff have maximized how you can use those drink holders, which is perfect for me. Uh, also, there is wireless phone charging, a few other things in here. So beautifully done, moral. Uh, I love these improvements. Interior is great with that one exception right there. Let's go wrap this up. All right, so there you go. Hopefully you can see some of that brighter blue I was talking about happening right here. Um, really, really great. This paint job itself is kind of a play on BMW's M series color palette. So nicely done for that. I would love to see that they did a red that does the same sort of thing. That would be awesome. So, there you go, that's what I got. This is a uh, 2023 BMW M340i, so it is the M series. Uh, beautiful car, great to drive, feels really good except for the long distance thing I talked about with my left or my right leg, uh, but overall really, really well done. And yeah, I've greatly enjoyed it. Head up display works really well. The turbos take a minute to kick in, but when they do, they really kick in. Um, just a wonderful overall experience. It is everything a BMW should be. So there you go. 
That's what I got. This has been Aaron. Talk to you again soon.